Okay, thank you very much for checking out the video today. We have a very special guest all the way from sunny San Diego. He was just telling me that it's lovely and warm. Uh, we have Derek Notman with us today. Now, Derek is a CFP or a virtual CFP, as he would describe himself. Uh, he runs a business called Connector. He's also involved in Intrepid Wealth Partners. I'll let him explain that in a little bit more detail. And what we're going to discuss today in, in a little bit uh, more detail is why financial advisors are going virtual. And, and Derek is very strong on this subject. And he's been uh, banging this drum, so to speak, for, for quite a while. But I'll, I'll let him uh, explain that. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Thanks very much for uh, for joining us today. Maybe maybe explain your, uh, you know, who you are, what you're doing a bit better than I did there, if you could. Please. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me, Paul. It's nice to chat with you. I appreciate it. Um, the other job. side of the world almost there. So that's good stuff. <laughs> but you're, uh, you're in my hometown. I was born in Dublin. So very, very near and dear to my heart there. Um, okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so I, I've been an advisor since 2006. Um, yeah. I, I learned the traditional way. You know, I had a brick and mortar office, cold calling, mm -hmm. you know, all of that stuff. And through just a really a convergence of a lot of things that happened in my life and just wanting to do something differently, I went virtual in 2013 mm -hmm. and have been virtual ever since and been very successful with it and worked all over the world. And you mentioned Connector. That's a separate technology company. I actually started to serve other advisors mm -hmm. because they saw what I was doing. And yeah. initially, like, ah, that'll never work. And then it worked. And they're like, so how did you do that? Right. And enough advisors mm -hmm. asked where I'm like, OK, I think I have something here. So I, I'm serving mm -hmm. the advisory community with this other company. But I'm still an active CFP today. I have client yeah. meetings every week. Uh, and I'm also running this other technology company. <clears throat> and can you define, I think the word virtual gets used a lot. I think that it, particularly if you're maybe not that technologically savvy, can you just define what that actually means and what it looks like to be a virtual advisor? You know, I, I think it confuses as much as it helps, if you like, even the terminology. Yeah, it's, it's really the only thing that I, is different between me and a brick and mortar advisor is I've swapped out the office and the conference table mm -hmm. for a webcam and a computer. That's it. Right. right. Everything I do is still the same. I still have you know, great relationships with my clients. We're able to get, mm -hmm. you know, see each other and really have these deep, meaningful conversations. Uh, I have clients that I've never met in person, but say they've actually felt like they've known me for years. Yeah. Um, so it works beautifully. You know, I'm still doing all of the planning that we normally would do, but I'm just doing it through a different medium. I'm also mm -hmm. marketing instead of prospecting. I think that's one of the huge differences. So okay. virtual is so much more than just a Zoom meeting. If that's what you think it is, you are sorely mistaken. All right. Well, let me put it to you this way then. If so I'm a financial advisor, I'm, I'm not virtual. I'm still meeting people face to face. I've just had a pretty ugly 2020 because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of pulled from pillar to post a little bit. Why should I care about the whole virtual movement, the movement towards technology? Well, it's simple. So we're in a service-based business. Mm -hmm. So we have to listen to what our customer wants and how they want it. Mm -hmm. The customer wants a much cleaner, more efficient experience. The rest of their life is already done online. They're dating, mm -hmm. they're banking, they're getting their medical stuff done. They're mm -hmm. ordering books, wine, groceries, you name it, right? All <laughs> online. Yeah. But they're, the traditional advisor is forcing them to still meet in person, which is even harder with the pandemic, of course. Yeah. So we have to simply listen to them. Everything else in the world has evolved. Technology has evolved. The consumer mm -hmm. has evolved because of technology. So now our mm -hmm. industry must. And mm -hmm. there's a wonderful study report that came out in 2019 called the Virtual Financial Advisor by McKinsey. Okay. At that time, before COVID was even on the radar, 42 million households were already prime candidates for virtual advice. Mm -hmm. So the shift had already happened. We've been in this mega trend for a while. COVID mm -hmm. just sped it up and cemented all of these changes. Mm -hmm. So advisors have to evolve they have to adapt or they're going to go extinct it's that simple hmm. and just to sort of dig in a little bit you mentioned with yourself you you set up as an advisor originally in 2006 you went fully virtual in, in 20 
2013. But you know, what were the challenges of, of growing your practice at the time? What sort of forced your hand and made you made you go virtual? Because that was a big leap, particularly in 2013. You know, that's seven years ago. That's that was you were an early adopter. You know, so what 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 made you go that way? Was there a particular um, thing that happened? Was it just a gradual shift? Did you make a conscious decision? How, how did it work? It was a conscious decision that was uh, really kind of perpetuated by a couple of things. One is like I, I had a son, a, 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 my, my son was born in 2011 mm -hmm. and I was not home. And you know, as a, as a very young kid, like they don't really know a whole lot, but as the, you know, our kids grow up very quickly, I wanted to be a present father. And the mm -hmm. old brick and mortar model meant that I was away from home a lot, working on nights and weekends and all the yeah. stuff that comes with that. And it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, some bad business dealings where, you know, I was taken advantage of by another advisor, you know, so just so a number, a number of things happened in my life mm. all around the same time to say, gosh, there has got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a better way. I, I didn't like working nights and weekends. I didn't like cold calling. I didn't like mm. running on this, this, you know, this rat race where I could never get out of it. And I did well, I was making good money, but it, I wasn't happy. I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. And there was always this nagging feeling, is this it? You know, there's mm. gotta be a better way. Mm. <clears throat> so that's, you know, these things all kind of came together and happened. I'm like, okay, there's gotta be a better way. We're doing everything else online. I gotta be able to figure out how to do this online. And that's what took me down this path. And the challenge was that no one had really done it. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of people out there that had done aspects of it, but they weren't yeah. really talking about it a whole lot. You know, I latched onto these folks. They're great people and learned a lot, but there wasn't a roadmap or a blueprint or anything. So I had to figure this all out on my own, on, you know, the hard way, tons of trial and error, um, but worth, worth every second and penny for sure. So on that, and you've obviously gone through the learnings and you've tripped over your shoes and, you know, maybe had good technology, bad technology, one client's lost clients. I'm sure you've, you've done all of the the, 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 the the things that would happen. So if you were talking to an advisor now and they're thinking, well, I need to be more virtual. I want to spend more time with my family. This pandemic is forcing my hand, et cetera. And you had to kind of say, you know, what not to do. What, what kind of things would you would you say to them? Well, there's a reason that we pay for expert advice. Mm -hmm. There's a reason clients come to us for help. Could they do it on their own? Sure. It's going to take mm -hmm. them a ton of time. They're going to trip. They're going to fail. They're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we go to subject matter experts to help and get things done. So mm -hmm. advisors tend to, I think there's two things. One is that they tend to be kind of cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's partially because as advisors, we're nickel and dime from every angle till Sunday. So yeah. we're very skeptical of investing any money in our businesses. So that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. But also we tend to let our ego get in the way. Um, right. And we have to have an ego to be successful in this business. We deal with a lot of rejection. So it's important mm -hmm. that you have a healthy ego, but sometimes that ego can get in the way of business development. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for an advisor who's looking to make the transition, whether they're new or they've been around 20 years, just acknowledge, be like, hey, I don't know how to do this. And mm -hmm. if I try to figure out on my own, it's going to take me a ton of time and money that I don't really want to spend. Mm -hmm. Why not get help from somebody who can actually help me? Yeah, no, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. What's funny uh, is I think the last year, like if, if you'd asked me 12 months ago what Zoom was as a technology, I probably would have said, mm, I don't know. But uh, these days, uh, even my mother's able to use Zoom and, and set, up a, set up a conversation. It's, become a, it's almost become a verb like Google, you know, so, which is a, a, amazing, really. I, I don't, don't think anybody would have foreseen that, you know, at the start of 2020, you know, it, it's been, it's been kind, of, kind of funny. But with that, I mean, you know, if someone was trying to really do this properly, you know, in terms of launching a, a virtual practice, they wanted to get the results, they wanted to get, you know, business growth, they're committed to it, and they're serious about making it happen. What, what sort of three or four things would you, would you say to them to, to focus on? Well, you have to have the right physical infrastructure in place. That's extremely important. If you're going to be mm -hmm. providing a really strong virtual experience, you mm -hmm. have to have the right computer, the right webcam, monitors, mic, mm -hmm. lighting, mm -hmm. tech, all of mm -hmm. these things. Because if, if someone can't see or hear you or it's a bad connection or whatever, it just leads to a really bad impression and people yeah. are not going to be comfortable. So yeah. it's really important that you can conduct amazing meetings and great sound and quality. Mm -hmm. You also need a robust digital uh, footprint. 
-hmm. people go online now to search for everything these days. Right. So if you are not active and present on social media and websites and all of those things, people are going to be like, well, why doesn't this person have a website or why do they have a LinkedIn profile, but they're not active? Like, what are they mm -hmm. hiding? Right. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, one of the core fundamental things for people to work with us is that we connect on strong commonalities. Right. People have to know who we are before they want to trust us. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have those things, you can't. So you have to have that in place. Mm. Um, strong virtual sales process, virtual sales team. You have to have this also this mind shift from prospecting to digital marketing. You know, think okay. about what, it. What, what do you mean by that? I've heard you mention that before. What, what do you mean by that specifically? Nobody likes to get prospected. It sounds like a bad medical procedure, okay? <laughs> it's just, people don't want it. Prospecting, like, it just has this negative connotation. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, how often do you like to get a cold call out of nowhere Mm -hmm. Or, you know, an email, a cold email pitch or a direct message or something. Mm -hmm. We don't like being prospected. It just feels bad. It's like, why don't you build a relationship with me first? Mm -hmm. So the old prospecting methods of the past are, if they're not dead already, they're almost dead. People just yeah. don't want them. Mm -hmm. So we have to have this mind shift to go to digital marketing. Mm -hmm. That's the oldest trick in the book. Go where people are and then be present. And when I say right. be present, don't pitch people, but build a relationship, build a brand, be mm -hmm. transparent, let people know who you are so they can actually come to you. Mm -hmm. You know, three and a half billion Google searches a day, right? Billions mm -hmm. of users on LinkedIn and Facebook. People are there. So we just have to go be present there and let, you know, let them get to know us. Mm -hmm. Prospecting doesn't make that work. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, or digital marketing, if it's done correctly, it's a, it's a, game changer. Now people come to you instead of you having to cold call them. You know, think about all the big successful brands in the world. Are mm -hmm. they cold calling us? Mm -hmm. No. They're marketing to us all the time with commercials and ads and all that kind of stuff, but they're not cold calling us. There's nothing different about our industry. I tell you here, yeah, I'm not <laughs> well, what, what I find interesting and what I, I constantly notice, particularly with you, is particularly on LinkedIn, and I spend a lot of time on, on LinkedIn, you're very strong in how you post, you know, the type of arguments that you post, the type of engagement you get back from your audience. You get a lot of interaction on the the posts that you put out there. And and to be honest, when, when I see people sort of start onto whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever it is, they, they often get a little intimidated by how much content they need to produce, you know, what kind of post they should be posting, what should they actually say. For, for example. So if someone's kind of looking at that and they're looking maybe at the level that you're at in terms of what, what you post, what, what do you think they should be thinking about or how should they approach it? Be genuine, be you, just say what's on your mind. Don't talk about product, don't talk about service. Mm -hmm. Talk about outcomes, talk about benefits, talk about experiences, talk about things you've learned. Mm -hmm. Make bold statements, mm -hmm. be polite, be respectful, stay away from politics, stay away from religion. Right. You know, these are all things that hold true. If you go to a networking event in person, which isn't happening anymore, at least today, no. this, these are the same kind of guidelines and things that you talk about. Mm -hmm. So LinkedIn, for example, is just another medium. It's an online networking event that we're mm -hmm. all able to go to and be present mm -hmm. and you have to engage. Right. So and there's so much here. I could go on and on. <laughs> yeah. and on. Um, it, maybe, it's maybe, so maybe if you could con condense it's already got it many condensed into two or three things if someone was kind of trying to get a handle on it of where they kind of should start with it i guess might be the way to think about it well you have to know who your ideal client is right so you have to take a step back if you are trying to be um, everything to everybody which a mm -hmm. lot of advisors tend to try to do yeah um then you're not going to know what your message is going to be you're always mm -hmm. going to be struggling because you don't know who you're talking to if you know who your ideal client is, it becomes very clear. Here are the pain points. Here are the things that are on their mind. Here are the questions mm -hmm. that you're getting from mm -hmm. those folks. And now you can go talk about those things. And it doesn't always have to be about business. It can be personal. <coughs> share pictures of your family. Share pictures of something that's fun that you've accomplished. Things like that. Let people get to know you on a personal level as well. Um, and no, it's never going to be perfect. 70% and out the door. I think that's good enough. And then you reiterate, right? You learn. Mm -hmm. and where else can you get instant free feedback on your content and mm -hmm. find out what works and doesn't work? It's a really great tool if you do it correctly. But you just got to get out there. 
just have to start and start talking about things that are on your mind and see what happens. I like that. So 70% and you're out the door. In other words, park your perfectionism because we're all perfectionists. Park your kind of ego where we're, we're all petrified of getting it wrong or looking silly and so on. Get it up, get it to 70% and hit publish and roll with it and then improve and iterate and do it again. And whether you do it again tomorrow or next week or next month, it doesn't matter. Just iterate and improve essentially. Is that, you is got that it. how yep. your approach is? Yeah, yep. okay. And then be engaged. Just like at a networking event, if somebody shares something or, or like you share something and someone comments on it, mm -hmm. you don't just stand there and kind of look at them like deer in headlights. You're, like, you have, you're having a conversation. You're having dialogue. And the same thing holds true on social media. Have that conversation. Say nice things. Respond to people. Tag them. Let them know that you appreciate them commenting. Mm -hmm. Extremely important. So it's, it's an active conversation, not a passive yes. conversation. Yes, yes, yes. So, so it's actually alive and engaged. As you say, if you're if you're face to face with someone, you wouldn't just stand there, stand there and look at them blankly. <laughs> right, that would be super creepy. <laughs> uh, well, if you didn't want to actually write some business, yeah. But there, there, there you go. <laughs> um, all right. So let me challenge you a little bit. And I love the fact that you've got a lot of experience with this. I love the fact that you know you understand what it means to work offline. You understand the virtual side of things, and you've really kind of created the life and the business that you want before we came in this call you told me that you'd relocate to san diego it's nice and warm it's nice and but because again you're running a virtual practice that suits you just fine and you can do that and and, and you have the flexibility to be smart about it and that's that's uh, brilliant and i believe it's nice and warm in san diego at the moment which it's not uh, here in dublin but uh, there you go but so to challenge you a little bit on you know if you were to start again tomorrow OK, you, without the, the role of context that you have, without the kind of social media connections that you have and, and, and so on. You had to start again tomorrow. What would you do? It's a lot there, right? So this assumes the new advisor has gotten all of their licenses and right. knows the baseline of products. So let's say you're six months in and you've got all that stuff done. Right. Um, I think it's extremely important to be lean and mean. So mm -hmm. take a step back. What are your hopes, dreams, and goals as an advisor? You know, I was never taught that or even preached that. They just, when I was recruited into the industry, it's just like, hey, here's how much money you can make if you sell these products, <laughs> right? And money will motivate you for only so far, and then you're, mm -hmm. then it falls flat. So really get yeah. clear on what you want in your life. Mm -hmm. And then if you do that correctly, not only is it amazing motivation and inspiration to build a business, but it also mm -hmm. helps you define who your ideal client is. Right. So get really niche. Mm -hmm. And once you figure out your niche, and then it will evolve over time, but you got to start somewhere, then you can build your brand and your processes mm -hmm. and everything else around that. Mm -hmm. So now it's really clear what you need to be doing every day. Mm -hmm. I would have a strong digital presence. No question about it. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that. And maybe you don't want to be all virtual. That's cool. You don't have to be. But at least mm -hmm. you have to have semi-virtual uh, semi capabilities. You mm -hmm. need to be able to meet people where they want to meet you. Some clients may just not want to see you in person. And if yeah. you don't have the capability to have a great virtual meeting, then you're never going to get that business. Right. So you have to have the right infrastructure in place. You have to be a digital marketing ninja. You've got to know these things. Um, so those are some of the things that I would focus on early on to really make sure you are going down the right path as much as possible as you're building your practice. Brilliant. And I think they'll be really helpful for people. And the digital marketing ninja thing, I think sometimes can be tricky. My experience of dealing with advisors, planners, and wealth managers is they're very well qualified generally on the financial side of things. You know, they have to be, they're regulated and, and so on, but they don't necessarily get an awful lot of education on not only digital marketing, just general marketing, prospecting, growing a business, their practicalities of actually running a business, which seems it seems amazing to me. I, I can't understand it myself, but it, it seems to be the way the, the, the industry works. So if somebody had to you know, really upskill themselves in the digital marketing side of things, where should they be going? What, what should they be looking at? Who should they be following? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a tough because there's a lot of good digital marketers out there, but be careful on who you mm -hmm. are talking to. There's mm -hmm. a lot of gurus out there who are self-proclaimed to have mm -hmm. the next best thing for how to get leads or all this, but most of them, are just pitching something so they can get paid. So be mm -hmm. careful there. There are some good resources out there, like you and your team. Mm -hmm. You have to vet them and be careful. And honestly, a lot of it, mm -hmm. you can just upskill yourself. Watch mm -hmm. some YouTube videos, read some books, 
get yeah. all, I mean, that's what I even teach in my connector system is put the infrastructure in the basics in yourself. Mm -hmm. And for a couple of reasons, one, you find your own voice that way and you find out what works and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You do it all yourself. So you understand the fundamentals. And then eventually you can outsource that. I've outsourced a lot of my digital marketing at this point, but I didn't start it that way. Right. So it's okay to build it yourself first. And it's a little bit of time, but marketing is prospecting. So why not spend more time marketing? And like my posts on LinkedIn, just LinkedIn, just this mm -hmm. calendar year, have reached over a million people already. Yeah. Okay. And it didn't cost me anything but my time. I can't get mm -hmm. that scale cold calling. It's just not possible. Right. So I think having that mindset shift to just be able to do that and learn some of that stuff is extremely important. And what's funny is, I mean, as much as advisors in the UK or in South Africa or in Australia or the US, you know, as much as they're different in different regulatory environments, uh, the challenge is the same. You know, the, uh, the the way you grow your practice to a certain extent is, is the same. Ironically, in the UK, cold calling for pension leads, for example, is, is banned. You know, you can't do it at all, you know. So wow. uh, it's, it's a little bit looser in the US. You can kind of get away with these things. But it, but the challenge of running and build, growing your practice is still exactly the same. The tools is still are still exactly the same. Same. being able to move to a more virtual model is still exactly the same you know yep. so which is uh, which is nice so where do you, where do you see i mean you're you're at a an interesting point and then you talk to a lot of advisors you know you're in the industry yourself you know i, I know you deal with a lot of people who are, who are quite senior in the industry as well so where do you see the industry going what, what's happening with this kind of virtual movement you know do you, do you see it accelerating do you see it's going to fall flat after covid goes away or, or what do you think no so well first off my crystal ball has never worked so this is speculation <laughs> right right um but i i see it accelerating now the the need for human advice will never go away Mm -hmm. An algorithm can never understand a human entirely, right? Because they're just, you know, human beings are complex, dynamic things. Mm -hmm. So we need another human being to help us through with a variety of things. But the way, the medium has already shifted, mm -hmm. right? And we've been in this, I mentioned earlier, this mega trend for the last 20 years or so with mm -hmm. this massive evolution of technology, which has empowered the consumer to do things differently. Yeah. So now our industry is finally picking up and has been forced to evolve. Now, will we ever go fully virtual? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I suspect that it's probably gonna, the pendulum will swing back a little bit. We'll probably have more of a semi-virtual environment that we work out of. Yeah. But the big companies are listening and they're paying attention and they are adding all sorts of infrastructure to be able to do virtual meetings, to have stronger digital marketing capabilities. Mm -hmm. These things are not going away. Right, especially the younger generations. I mean, that McKinsey study said in 2019, 42 million households. Right. What do you think it is today? You know, a year and a half later, it's got to be a heck of a lot more. Yeah. You know, my thing is always if grandma can FaceTime the grandkids, then they can do this stuff online, right? You know, and the yeah. younger generations even more so. They almost demand it now. They, if they can't get a, a nice digital virtual experience, they're going to go somewhere else where they can. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And I see it, see that all over the world. They literally demand a particular generation. What do you mean I can't do it online? You know, what do you mean it's not virtual? What do you mean I can't get it through my smartphone? Like it's exactly. Are you, it's you just, want me to just print and fax something? What? <laughs> <laughs> it seems so backwards, doesn't it? It seems it really so does. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And so listen, what what's what's next for you, Derek? You know, what are your what are your plans? Yeah, so I, I'm still an active advisor and I don't um, expect to be stopping that anytime soon. I love working mm -hmm. with my clients, but that, my practice is at a point now where I'm very selective of who I'm bringing on. Yeah. Um, and really a lot of my time now, my passion is building Connector, where I'm mm -hmm. empowering other advisors around the world. I already mm -hmm. have one product line out there, the Virtual Advisor System, which has been hugely successful this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I am also working on, here's a hint, hint, I'm working on another product that I think is going to totally disrupt a certain aspect of the industry of what we do. And I'm not going to say anymore right now because it's still in development stages, <laughs> but that is something that's coming for 2021. Very good. So you're really, really sort of going deep on the on the software and tools side, side of your business. Well, it? yeah, I love it. And, and the human component, though, there's a huge human component to this. So mm -hmm. um, just very stoked. Like, I love being able to help people. And the more advisors I help means the more clients get helped, which means everybody wins. So it's just a, a, a great place to be. And I, yeah, I just I love getting up every day and doing what I do. It's so much fun. 
Excellent. I love it. And if someone wanted to get in touch with you, where's the best place? Obviously, we'll link to it in the notes, but where's the best place for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, email's great. My website's great. You'll, I mean, you'll have that stuff in the show notes. That's fine. Yeah. LinkedIn, I'm very open there. So mm -hmm. feel free to send me a connection request on LinkedIn. I'm happy to chat with people offline or direct messages. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm here just to help as many people as I can. So I'm trying to be as open, as transparent as possible. So just, you know, shoot me a note. What's on your mind? What challenges do you have? You know, how can I help you? Let me know. Excellent. Derek, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate your insights. And uh, I'm sure uh, all of our audience are going to get a huge amount from that. It's a pleasure, Paul. Thanks for having me, my man. I appreciate it. Not at all. Thank you. <laughs>